What is going on, family? God, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's your brother once again, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam Lopez, and I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad that we are communicating one side to the other, right? Whatever mobile device, if you're listening from the podcast, on the audio version only, or you're on the live stream with me, amen, and with us, or you're at the community at live, that's someone is with a Z, that R-G. I welcome you all, and I bless you all in the powerful name the warrior God, Jesus' name, amen and amen. So listen, we're talking about winning the battle. How could we win the battle if we're not knowing who are we fighting? Who are you fighting? If you don't know who you are fighting, I don't think you're going to win any battles. So I thought about that. I was like, who are we fighting? Because a lot of people think that in churchianity and Christianity and religions all around the world and different religions are all fighting against each other. A lot of people really think that, oh, your idea is different than my idea, so therefore we got to fight, we got to argue, we got to debate. And the scriptures, the holy scriptures, the Bible really doesn't even say nothing like that. The Bible doesn't say, hey, um, if whoever doesn't believe in Jesus, you have to fight them physically, flesh and blood fight, like with guns and bats and knives and all that stuff. The Bible is against that type of violence. You see, you'll see violence all through the scriptures. I'm going to be the first to admit it. Any Christian should be able to admit that. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, you'll see violence. You'll see murder. You'll see wars. You see rumors of wars. You see slander. You see pestilence. You see famines. You see um, injustice. You see unholy and unho- ungodly people doing unholy and ungodly things all through the scriptures. And you see battles. But then we have a king in this battle that won every single battle that we will ever fight. And also he won the ultimate war for our lives. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what I wrote. This is what I was inspired to write anyway this morning. Who are you fighting? That's the title of this morning's Devo. And who is it you're battling against? That's a good question, right? If you don't know who you're battling against, you won't know how to win the battle. It's like that person is my enemy. You say, Sam is my enemy. And you don't even know me, right? But he's my enemy. How do you not how how did I become an enemy if you don't even know me? Right? So a lot of people are going around casting out demons in the name of Jesus. Great, we could do that. We have the authority by the power of Jesus to do that. A lot of people are going around saying everybody's demon possessed. A lot of people are saying that we need deliverance. Everybody's going around being delivered. Amen. Praise the Lord. But who are we battling? Are we going to different churches and because they have 10 people and the other church has 10,000 people, we're saying that the 10,000 member church is better or greater than the 10 member church. And then they start fighting against each other to see who's better in the kingdom. That's a different type of battle, right? But it's still between people, between flesh and blood. And the Bible has something different to say. We're going to see that in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. So who is it that you're battling against? Can you fight this battle on your own? And I'm going to add to that question. Can you fight this battle on your own? And if you can fight it on your own, do you think you could win? You against everybody? Do you think you're going to win? Amen. Listen, I grew up watching Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee could fight 5, 10, 15 people at one point. But he's going to get hit. He's going to get hurt. Um, He won a lot of those battles, right? Um, He's no longer with us on this planet Earth. But when you see him, how fast he was, how, how skillful he was, right? And how powerful he was. Even through all that skill, power, and that speed, he still had his weakness. And he realized that a lot of his battles, he couldn't win if he was fighting it alone. Amen? And that's in the natural. So, in a supernatural, amen, I believe some of that applies. But you know, enough of that. That's just I'm just trying to tease you to get you wondering what in the world am I talking about this morning. Amen? And I hope I'm doing a good job at it. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests like that, please don't hesitate to leave it right now in the live chat. Also, if you're listening from the podcast, shout out to all my podcast listeners. I'm going to look at the cities again, and then I'm going to start shouting out the cities, the top five cities that listen to the podcast all around the nation and all around the world. Um, I'm blessed to have you every week with us. Amen. And just really, we're getting into the word, man. That that excites me. Getting into the word excites me more um, than anything, actually, because the word of God is the authority, the power, the grace, the mercy, the life, the love, right? The source of all power is found in God's word. Amen. And the Holy Spirit, God, who lives in every single person who put their hope, faith, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ is reminding us of his word and the power of his word. Amen. 
So Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13, that's where we're going to be camping out this morning on the Morning Devo. I hope you have time. If not, if you don't have time right now to watch this whole thing or listen to this whole live, amen. After it's all said and done, it will be rebroadcasted, restreamed, and you can listen to the podcast at any time, 247, right? So that's the whole beauty of technology and um, Cellar Radio Network and all that that we have going on. If you know somebody right now, before I pray, I just always want to say this. If you know somebody right now that does not have social media, they're not on YouTube, they don't know how to use Twitch, they're not on Facebook or anything of the social media network, send them straight to live. That's so winners with a Z. Dot org live. That's so winners with a Z. Dot org, and there they'll see that they could have their own space. A live chat is there. Their own Bible, right? And notes, a place where they can take notes and a place where they can see my notes. Amen. So it's a good thing. Also, if you look at the thank you on that page, if you read, I need volunteers for this um, website as well. Amen. And you could be a prayer warrior. Um, you could be um, somebody who wants to help me in the background as a moderator. You could be in a live chat for me and all that good stuff. We need to connect and team up with that. Amen. There's a lot of people looking for the truth. A lot of people are looking for love. A lot of people are looking for the true God. Amen. And I believe we have that connection by way of Holy Spirit, God, by way of the word of God. I believe Christians, the God of the Christians, Jesus is Lord. I believe in that Lord as God. Amen. And just because I believe a thing doesn't mean make a thing right or true. It's just I follow the evidence to where it led in my life. Amen. And the evidence led to the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Hopefully you want to experience what the truth is in your life. Amen. And do a search. And in your search for truth, you're going to bump into the Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. From that point, you should, should, you should investigate his claims. He had a lot to say about himself and what he could do and what he has done and who he is. Amen. And he identified himself. He didn't hide out. He identified himself, himself as God, Yahweh, God. Amen. So let's pray. And then after we pray, we're going to share this out for a minute. 60 seconds to share this out with as many people as we can. And when we come back, we'll be in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. Lord Jesus, the battle is on every single day, and you know it, but you help us through these battles, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you have overcome every single battle in my life and every single battle in every person's life that's watching and listening. I pray I had your protection. I pray the warring angels right now to be dispatched to every single home, household, job, workplace, school, wherever you are finding your people in need, Lord God, that you send your warring angels and that they will come against any attack of the diabolical enemy of this world, uh, the world system and the world of the God of this age. We come against that in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for the armor of God that we could put on every single day. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you for your grace, your mercy, your power, your authority. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our King and our Lord and our Savior. I pray, Lord God, that you will open the eyes of those eyes that are shut right now, open the ears of those ears who are not hearing your word right now. And I come against every distraction right now in the powerful name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, that we will have strength in our bodies, strength in our bones, health to our flesh, and that you, Lord God, will get the honor, glory, worship, and the praise as we know and identify who we are actually battling against. And Lord God, thank you for teaching us your word today. And I thank you for the testimonies that are going to come come through because of this morning Devo. In Jesus' holy name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. Let's take a minute, 60 seconds to share this out with as many people as we can. When we come back, we're going to jump right into it. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. I'll be right back.
Amen, amen. We're back. Let's get right into it. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. And I like it how it starts. It says a final word, and so that means there's a final authority in this scripture. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So when God says to be something, we are something that he says we are to be. It's a commandment. And it's also a transformative commandment. If God says, be strong, be courageous, we become that strong and courageous person. So be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all, everything. You already know, if you're in a battle, why not put on the full armor? Put on all of God's armor so that you may be able to stand against all strategies of the devil. So if you have all the armor on, you're going to be able to stand against all the demonic strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. That's the simple Simon stuff, fighting against flesh and blood enemies. But no, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. They have authority in the unseen world. Against mighty powers in this dark world. So what's going on in the spiritual realm Amen. Is affecting what's going on in this world. If you haven't noticed that already. Against his against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits, plural, evil spirits in the heavenly places. It doesn't say evil spirits in heaven. People say, Oh, what do you mean there's evil spirits in heaven? It doesn't say evil spirits in heaven. It says evil spirits in the heavenly places above us. Therefore. Therefore, right, we know this now. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor. Let's let's not shortchange the armor of God. Let's put it all on. If we have armor to put on from God, um, we will be foolish not to put everything that's available from God for us to put on. The armor of God, I'm going to put it all on. Put it all on. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist, resist the enemy in the time of evil. Whatever time of evil that you may be facing right now, uh, whether you faced it, you just got out of a time of evil or another time of evil is coming. So either way, we need to be ready and stay ready for the attacks that are coming your way, my way and all our way. Right. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so we will be able to resist, resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. It's going to get ugly. It's going to get dirty. It's going to get grimy. Absolutely. Uh, You ever been in a fight before? I have been a lot. I've been in a lot of fights before. Um, And it gets ugly. It gets bloody. It gets it gets bad. But here I am still standing. There you are still standing. Amen. And that's in the natural realm. Amen. God protected me in all every single fight I ever had. Um, He protected me and I give him that credit. Uh, in a spiritual battle, he protected me. He'll protect you as well. I have to give him that credit as well. So whether it's a physical fight or a spiritual fight, amen. But I think, and I've been learning, that spiritual battles are more fierce than natural battles sometimes. Because spiritual battles, even though we don't see it happening, we know it's happening. Amen. You ever prayed for someone and then a manifestation of a demon appears in that person that you're praying for? Where did that come from? In the natural? No, it came from the supernatural realm. And because you're bringing down the host of heaven, you're bringing down heaven to this earth when you connect with somebody in the powerful name of Jesus and you're doing evangelism, you're doing ministry according to the power of the word of God. Amen. Things in the heavenly will be exposed and they will manifest. They will appear in the physical. It happened to me more times than I want to admit. And I wasn't looking for it. One time during my ministry, people think thought I was a demon hunter. They said, man, how come every time you go and pray for somebody, demons come out? I said, they said, I'm not looking for no, I don't want no smoke with no demons, but I know for sure the demons don't want no smoke with my Lord and my Savior. So in Jesus' name right now, I speak Jesus right now through the airways, through the broadcast, through the live stream, through the podcast. And right now the demons tremble and flee. The Bible says that if we submit to God, resist the devil, guess who's going to run? We ain't going to have to run devil's gonna run 
So this is a spiritual war, the spiritual battle. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Who is it that you're battling against? Oh, so-and-so says something about me now. We got, you know, we got, we got beef, we got problems. So let me go to his hood, her hood. Um, so this person to that person and we're going to fight. Uh, and at high school, you see that a lot. Junior high, middle school, junior high school, high school, you see that a lot. Um, unfortunately, you see it younger and younger kids. Um, somebody will say something in school and then, oh, meet me af- after school in the park and we're going to scrap. We're going to fight. We're going to, you know, do this, that, and the third. It still happens. It was happening when I was a kid and it's still happening now. Uh, I pray over my, my, my daughter that's in school now that that won't happen. She won't have to face that. Uh, but there's a high risk of her facing that uh, when there's, you know, people out there that get angry and they think the only resolve to, you know, get past that anger is to fight somebody physically. But we have an enemy, ladies and gentlemen, the devil. He hates you. He hates me. He doesn't just hate Christians. He hates all of God's creation. I don't know where we got this thing about all oh, um, Jesus against the devil. There's no Jesus versus devil. The devil's defeated. Jesus already defeated the devil. But the devil is one of those enemies that we have. You ever had an enemy that even though he's defeated, but he's still dangerous and he's desperate. So he'll use any whatever he can to try to beat you, try to destroy you, try to kill you, try to steal from you. That's the type of enemy we have. The enemy of, of the age of this world is the devil. Amen. So he hates everyone. He hates even the people who think they're worshiping him because we're all created in the image of God. So every time he sees God on the earth, he sees the image of God on earth. He hates you. Even if you worship the devil, he hates you. You're a witch or Wiccan. He hates you. And to Santaria or whatever, he hates you. You might think you have some kind of allegiance with the devil. He has no friends. Even the angels that he hangs out around with, right? The one, the third of the angels that he convinced to come out of heaven, which is he's a father of lies, so he must have been promising them something. Um, they were duped. And um, there's an order even in the kingdom of darkness, but he hates them too. He hates everybody. There's no love in the devil. There's no truth in the devil. There's no light in the devil. He hates all of us. So that means we have a common foe, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, but Sam, I'm not a Christian, so I ain't got no smoke with the devil. It don't matter. He hates all of God's creation. I don't know where this came from that the devil only hates Christians. The devil only hates Jesus. The devil only hates religious people. No, he hates everyone, all of God's creation. I just wanted to get that out because a lot of people say, oh, I ain't got no smoke with him because, you know, I don't believe in the devil, so therefore I don't have no beef with him. I've never met an enemy of mine that um, just because they didn't believe in what I did, it didn't matter to them. Uh, they were just, they didn't like me. It don't, it don't matter if, the, if, we, if we agree or disagree on religious things or spiritual things or God, Jesus. If somebody doesn't like you, they don't like you. They don't care what you believe, right? Or what you don't believe, right? The enemy don't care what you believe. As long as you don't believe in the Lord, he, you know. If you're not bumping into the to the devil during your walk as a Christian, that might mean it's because you're walking alongside of him. If you're not clashing with the devil during your Christian journey, during your walk here on earth, not crashing into his enemies, crashing into his his fallen angels, his demons. If you're not, you know, crossing um, the demonic things, then that means you're walking alongside of them. And, you know, yeah, you don't have no issues because you're going along with what they're trying to do in your life. But true believers, we all know this, um, that we're going to have encounters with the enemy. We're going to have battles in the spiritual realm. But we have the juice, we have the sauce, we have the full armor of God to put on. It doesn't say that God's going to put on this armor for us. It says for us to put it on. Amen. Uh, I don't wake up and go into some kind of superhero chamber and then press though everything gets on me. I'm, you know, like Iron Man, you know, I don't press a button and then the whole armor gets on me. Nope. It doesn't work that way. I have to put on the full armor of God. You have to put on the full armor of God. What is the full armor, Sam? Look in Ephesians chapter 6. It tells you what the full armor is. And if you think it's fun and games, walk around without armor and see what happens when the times of evil come knocking on your door. Because you decided that you could fight on your own. You could do this on your own. You don't need the Holy Spirit. You don't need uh, God's armor. You don't need God. See how that works out for you. I pray that you're not that person that's going around thinking you got this. You could defeat the devil. 
um, that you're casting out the devil and all this other stuff. Listen, we get excited. We've been praying. Um, every now and then I'll pray, um, come against the devil, right? Uh, we cast out the devil or we, um, we bind him. Uh, I, you know, you get, sometimes you get emotional and you be like, you're so angry at him and what he's doing uh, that we say these things. But the only one that gives the devil a smackdown is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's already done it. He'll do it again in front of us so that we can see it, not with our own eyes, but he's already done it. Um, but I must admit, I've prayed those prayers before just because I'm angry at what the devil does to people and what he tries to do to you and what he tries to do to me on a day-to-day basis. He's the most consistent enemy we all have, the devil. He's more consistent than the bills that come every month to your home. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Rich Tyler, the devil is totally into himself, doesn't care for anyone else but self. Remember, his famous word, I will, I will, his presence is confusion. Yeah. You know, he's me, myself, and I, and then he lies to the angels, the fallen angels that are following him, and, you know, he's leading them to um, the unpromised land, right? He, they, They're all going to be destroyed, but in the meantime, while we have this enemy living among us, um, let's not go for his tactics. Let's not go for his lies. So who is it you're battling against? Figure it out. We just read it. Amen. A lot of people think, nah, you know, I'm a Democrat, so, you know, I'm against Republicans, so that's the way the real battle is. Or oh, I'm a Ukrainian and, and um, I'm not a Russian, so the battle's between the U- U- UK and Russia. Or, you know, uh, I'm a Protestant and, and you're, uh, you know, I don't know, Catholic. And we can't get along because that's where the battle is. Well, those are arguments and those are uh, wars and those are battles that are in the natural. But we're talking about the supernatural. Step up your your mindset a little bit because we're talking about the supernatural. God is talking about the supernatural. God, Holy Spirit, inspired Apostle Paul to write Ephesians chapter 6 for a reason. Amen. Because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he wrote this while he was looking at a Roman soldier, looking at that armor, and he was inspired to take that as a way of a segue to let us know that we're in a spiritual battle. And although the people in Rome had their armor on ready for a natural battle, there's a battle that's deeper, that's greater than that, and it's a supernatural battle. So Apostle Paul said, nope, we don't war against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. And the unseen world, when people hear that, they think it's like a horror movie or something like that. Well, if we had the eyes to see in the spirit realm, and every now and then God will give us a glimpse of the spirit realm as a believer, every now and then God will give you a glimpse of the spiritual realm. Uh, I never saw anything in the spiritual realm that that didn't have me going, whoa, what is that? And whoa, that's big. And whoa, um, you know, it's something supernatural, not natural. So, We're not going to be accustomed to seeing the supernatural things all the time. And it's going to make us look like, whoa, um, that's incredible. That's something different. Amen. Kingdom strong. God bless you, my brother. Walk in power, power in the Holy Spirit, his power and authority against the enemy, enemy's lies and schemes. Yes. If we don't walk in that power, my brother, we're walking in our own power. And that's willpower. And willpower goes as far as as. Is as far as you could throw me and I could throw you. It doesn't go far. Amen. We need the supernatural power of God. Thank you for that comment. Our brother Rich says, to get even with God, Satan does wage war on Almighty How? It's to hurt God's children and create false truth that ruins true faith and belief all the time. He's the father of lies. The Bible says, don't believe him. He's been lying since the beginning. Right? Chapter 3 of Genesis came in the form of a serpent. With some lies, some fancy talk. You know, he's a, uh, you know, he has the gift of gab. He talks his way through things. And also, and also he'll use some of the truth and then, you know, distort it into a lie. Perversion is called. Can you fight this battle on your own? I can't fight. I'll be, let, let me answer the question. I can't fight this battle on my own. Amen. There's been a lot of times that I had to because nobody else was around. And in the spirit realm, you have to just go for yours. Amen. We have the kingdom of God living inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us. But God, through Jesus, right, sent sent us out by two. Therefore, there's something about God sending us out in pairs 
that we shouldn't be doing this alone. But there's sometimes when you just have to go for yours, man. The enemy is attacking your family at home. It's 2, 3 in the morning. Get up, man of God. Get up, woman of God, and pray over your family. Anoint your family. Go to the places where you think the evil spirit is or the evil demonic entities are and go into that place with full authority and power and don't have fear and go at, with the full armor of God and war against those things. The war is already won. The battle is here, and we are up for the battle because God says we win all the time. Amen with him. We must walk in discernment. Yes, knowing who's who and what's what. Test every spirit. Not everybody that says Jesus, Jesus, right, is a Christian. Uh, uh, Jesus made that clear. Not everybody that does signs, miracles, and wonders is a Christian, true Christian, because at the end of the day, God is the ultimate judge. Jesus will find out who's who and what's what. He already knows who's who and what's what. So in, in the natural realm, it might, it might be easy to fool people, but in the supernatural realm, you ain't fooling nobody. God is not to be mocked or fooled. You can't trick God, and you can't just do it. I wonder always how this snake in Genesis is able to talk, and no one noticed, not even Adam or Eve. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if the animals were talking, um, but it wasn't mention of an animal talking to the serpent, right? And I think, this is just me, of course, I can't prove it in Scripture. The Scripture doesn't say it, but I just think... Um, Adam was already whooped by Eve, so he was just goo goo gaga. Oh, yes, dear, I'll do whatever you say, that type of thing, because she must have been all of that. I'm just saying, you know. Um, but because of him not taking his position as the leader of the family, um, all of this happened. All of this, what's happening in the world, that was the result. But isn't God good, though? He knew us, you know, there had to be a rescue plan, and he sent his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus, that. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So we have a Savior. Amen. And the need for that Savior was because of the fall of man. It was because of the fall of man. Amen. And God had uh, another plan for that. Even to do, to take care of that. Don't talk to anyone in an animal suit. <laughs> yeah, don't talk to anyone in an animal. First John chapter 4, 4 says, The spirit who lives in me and in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. So therefore, if there's a spirit in me, that means there's a spirit in this world. Amen? I think we all have spirit. We're all walking around with a spirit. Some have a Holy Spirit. Some have unholy spirit. Amen? Um, you'll know right away who's, who's rolling up with the Holy Spirit, uh, whether you're in a church or uh, a church community or a body of believers. Um, you'll know something is not right when you go into a prayer circle and... You just sense something is not right. You're using discernment like King of Strong said earlier. And you just know something is right. But we have to keep on going. We have to pray in the spirit. We have to pray continuously. We have to put on the full armor of God. We have to be uh, aware. Watch and pray, the Bible says. So we have the scriptures. We have the word. We have the spirit of God. We, What don't we have? We have everything we need to win the battle. Amen. We just need to know who are we fighting. Who are we fighting? Are we fighting against each other because we don't agree uh, with the, the power of the ministry of tongues or we don't believe in um, baptism to be saved or you need to be saved um, through baptism or, you know, we don't understand the Trinity. So therefore, since we don't understand the Trinity, the Trinity like those things are to me, they're secondary issues and they're argumentative, you know, debatable, whatever. But is that what the battle is? That's who we're fighting one against another? The enemy would love to, for us to believe that. Oh, I'm fighting against this brother because he don't believe in the Holy Pentecost. He don't believe in the day of Pentecost. So therefore, Or he's post-tribulation, I'm pre-trib, so therefore we can't ride out no more. And then you go to scripture, oh, let's two agree, how could they walk with one another, right? Um, let's stop that. Let's focus on what we do believe. We believe that Lord, the, the Lord Jesus is our personal Lord and Savior. He's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's the last Adam, wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, Almighty God. He's the only begotten Son of God. He's our Savior, right? He has the authority was given to the Lord Jesus Christ. All authority was given to him, amen? Everything was created for him and through him, amen? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and Jesus was that um, beginning, Amen? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. These are the things that all Christians should be believing in as the body, right? Um, so if other issues come after that, then other issues come after that. And remember, um, we're never going to understand the completeness of God. 
I know the, I know somebody right now that will argue with me and say, oh, no, we know the completeness of God because the word says that we have. OK, uh, if that was true, then we we're all walking around with full knowledge of who and how God operates. And we know for sure that we don't have that knowledge. Um, God has way more than what he left us. He left us more than enough in the scriptures. I, I'll admit that. Um, but I believe the scriptures don't have the totality of God. Like our Bible, 66 book Bible, doesn't have the totality of God. It has more than enough that we need to know who he is, to identify with him, to get saved, to get born again, right? To have eternal life, um, to know what he did in the past. So that way he's his resume, what he, he could do for us now and in the future. Uh, we know revelation. We know we win. We know the amen is coming back. We know he's coming back with a new heaven and a new earth. He's not just going to, you know, do uh, renovations on this planet. He's coming with a new heaven and a new earth. We know all of that. But, you know, we don't, we're not going to know the fullness. We're not going to know the fullness. The word says, a house divided cannot stand. We must be united in the kingdom of God. Amen. And, bro, every generation of believers, we're going to be saying this over and over again. And there's going to be others after we say this. Uh, that says it's not going to be possible when Jesus prayed the prayer that we will be one as he is one with the father. Let's go. Let's get with God's program, right? Kingdom God, uh, kingdom strong. Let's go with God's program and um, push the other agendas away, man, because it's not working. Who are we fighting? Who are you fighting? Uh, everybody that comes on here that believes in the Lord, uh, that's my brother and that's my sister. Um, we might have arguments and fight every now and then. Um, but that's not where our battle is. Our battle is against the principalities in the heavenly realms. So let's ask God to open our eyes, man. Open our eyes to where the real battle lines are drawn in your life and in my life. Let God be our shield. Let his word be our guide. And let's trust in him today and every day that we're going to have a battle. And if you don't think you're going to be in a battle... Once you became a born again believer, ladies and gentlemen, you have been enlisted in the army of God. So prepare yourself for war, for the battle. We're winning anyway. It might seem that we lose some battles. It just seems that way because temporary setbacks, issues that happen in life that we don't understand the completeness of because we're not the Alpha and Omega. We follow, we believe in, and we worship the Alpha and Omega. He knows the beginning from the end. But sometimes things happen. And we were like, man, it seems like we lost that battle. But yet, if you're saying that, it means you're still standing. So therefore, you won. And I won. Continue to stand. Stand firm. Believe in Jesus. He's holy. He's loving. He's great. He's awesome. He's amazing. And he's the warrior God. And he wants us to know who are we fighting. And he lets us know in Ephesians chapter 6. So I'm out of time. But God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Till the next time. Peace.